All right, what's up everyone? Alex Boylan here with Dream Jobbing. Couldn't be more excited to have a celebrity animal trainer, TV host, producer, Dave Salmoni, here to do five questions with. Appreciate it, man. You for a long time friend? Yeah, yeah, we've known each other for a while, a long time. He's been a, he, he was involved with Lisa and I, we were out to dinner when we created The very first Jobbing. conversation, yeah, I remember yeah. it well. Well, and he just uh, finished up Jimmy Kimmel last night. Last so night. Yep. thanks for taking a little bit of time to answer some questions. My pleasure to be here. All right, awesome. So as we've talked about, this is uh, mainly for an audience that's a little younger, right. thinking about like where they want to go in their career. Yep. And so your advice is uh, extremely helpful. I'll do what I can. All right, <laughs> All right let's do it. So first question is, um, uh, you know, you've had 19 years working on hosting shows yep. for Discovery Channel and you've done stuff with Great White Sharks and Big yep. Cats in Africa and Animal Planet. Um, where did your passion for animals and wildlife all begin? The passion was something I was luckily born with. So like as far back as grade two, I wrote in a scrapbook so I'm going to be a zoologist. There's no chance I even knew what one was. <laughs> um, so there's never been a time that I could say, oh, it was this moment that I loved animals. Just born with it, loved it, fascinated. Animals always liked me. I always liked animals. So if there was a book report, you know, go to the library and write, get a book out. There was always some kind of animal. Uh, as a young kid, you know, I was into sports and all that kind of stuff. I was a diehard Chicago Bears fan, but I never had anything but lions and tigers on my walls and the posters and all that. So it's it just embedded into who I was always. I was the animal guy. Uh, I grew Did up you in, have exposure to it? Were you like no. were you like out in the woods like messing? Well, oddly, yeah. So um, I had family dogs, family, you know, that kind yeah. of stuff, you know, lived in a subdivision, whatever, like a normal person. But luckily, very early on, my father, my father and mother, bought a family cottage to help me grow up with my cousins because he, my dad bought it with his dad or his brother. Mm -hmm. And so we spent our summers every year going up to the cottage. And the cottage was very tiny, very like, my mom was like, Dave, you have way too much energy, get out. <laughs> like, pack lunch, get out. So, Younger than would be allowed in this day and age, right. I was kicked out of the cottage, they'd come back for dinner. Uh, so I would walk around, find a beaver dam, and then just pack lunch, sit and wait. And really? I want to see a beaver come out. Oh and, my gosh, know. that's fascinating. And so, yeah, there, so that's how it grew. I think it was like, I was a kid who didn't like rules. I was a kid who didn't like to be told what to do. And my most magical moments were all of these times when I was out with animals and sharing time with them, sharing space with them. And I wasn't getting in trouble because I wasn't breaking any rules. You know, stay alive, get home at the, you know, for dinner. That's really all, the only problem I had. So I think that grew into going into university saying, oh, what am I supposed to do here? The only thing I really like is animals. I'll do zoology. My father, you know, who was a chemical engineer at the time, you know, uh -huh. consistent job from when he was 18 to when he, you know, retired. What are you going to do with a zoology degree? I'm like, oh, I don't care about that. I want to study animals. I love animals. Yeah. So I went up north, which was only half, my university was only about a half an hour from where my cottage was. Okay. Um, but it was in the middle of the bush. So that's where I think I really started to excel and realize it was something I was really good at intellectually as well as passionately. So I got there and I started to, once I realized that I was taking subjects that I, was re I really cared about, I then, mm -hmm. my, my C's became B's, became A's, yeah. and then graduating finally quite well. My thesis was uh, well received, I did my first thesis on black bear um, nuisance problems. Uh, and that was just me out there in the bush tracking bears. Uh, <laughs> which was like, that's that when I realized awesome. that was it. Yeah, it was awesome and it was fun. And that's when you start starting to get a sense. I don't think I was articulate enough to understand the word passion yet. Mm -hmm. But it certainly was when it started to meld. When you It like, didn't feel like work or homework. Exactly or right. But yeah. I also felt like it was all of a sudden where I, I thought I wasn't good at academia. I thought I wasn't as smart as those smart kids. Yeah. And then it was like, okay, I got a subject and I'm crushing all the nerds. I was a bouncer at nighttime <laughs> and all the smart guys were asking for my help because once it became a subject that I knew about and understood and there was a little bit of theory and practice to zoology, I excelled. You're like, oh, I can do this. I might not be able to beat you in calculus, but I can, you know, animal behavior, I really understood. And so because I, like I said, I didn't, at that point wasn't throwing around the word passion, but certainly it was like, hey, there's something here. I'm good at this. Uh, and it's, and as you said, mm -hmm. like, it didn't feel like a fight. I wasn't fighting professors anymore. I wasn't fighting my parents anymore. I was just like, I do this if I want to do it. Yeah. So I eventually was getting pushed to do a PhD. They said, like, you know, you're doing well in academia, you should carry on. I was like, this is not what I came here for. I want to play with animals. I yeah. want to have my hands on them. I want to see them. I want to... And so I went and I left school and I said, I'm going to go to a zoo. The only place a person growing up in a 
cul-de-sac, you know, neighborhood. And, and at this point in time, are you like, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life? No. This is the career for me, or is this just... No, it's just, I <laughs> want to do this. I have... No, this is where I'm starting to understand passion a little bit. It's like, it's, it, I'm too young to care about money right. or career or... At this point, it was undriven. I just knew that this was the direction I was supposed to be going. And certainly wasn't my, how are you going to earn a living when you're 40? Uh, that certainly wasn't my thought at right. the time. But, and I was concerned about it. But I was like... I'm going to follow the passion first, you know, and I can figure some of that stuff out later. Went to a privately owned zoo, got very lucky because all the big zoos wouldn't hire me. They're like, you know, you're going to get bored here because really a lot of it's just sweeping and picking up poop. So eventually a privately owned zoo hired me. They believed that the one of the biggest problems with captivity is boredom. You you really do have to challenge the minds of these animals. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so to do that, they'd take them out and they would train them. So all the animals that wanted to come out of their enclosures were allowed to and could get their physical fitness in, could get their brain, you know, right. used a little bit. And I bought into it. And at that point, I, I didn't really know ethically or morally how I felt about zoos. I just felt like this is kind of where I'd like to test it to, get to, to make those opinions. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and this is where I get to the passion part. <laughs> um, I can remember the sweeping for two weeks. And one day, a lion goes around the corner of a barn. And I was just dumping a wheelbarrow. And I see this lion, I see a leash, and there's nobody else attached to that leash. A lot, big male lion, big mane, looks at me. Oh, man. Looks just like the pictures on my walls. I was a kid, and I was like, I've always wanted to know what does that smell like? What does that feel like? What does it sound like? And I'm like, this is my chance. Like, I, I'm looking at this animal, and he looks fine. He looks calm, so I'm going to go pat him. So I walked up, I started Are petting by him. Yourself? By myself? By <laughs> myself. Wrang- the wrangler's nowhere to be found. I'm like... And he's rubbing on me, and I'm rubbing on him, I'm patting him, and it's, this is, immediately, I knew this is what I wanted to do forever. Forever, immediately touching him, I was like, this is right. This is where the passion comes. That, that, that spark of energy that just grows right in your chest when you feel your passion and you're doing your passion, that was that moment for me. I was like, this is what people talk about. You know, okay, I'll, and I have done a lot of things to get me to that passion moment, but once you feel that and you understand that, um, all of the work that you need to do to get to that is far, far more worth it. So I'll tell you all the different things you need to do to have a career like mine, but the reason you want a career like mine isn't the money or the, because we know it's not all there. <laughs> it's the passion. you got to work yeah. to have those passion moments. That lion, and let me covet if anybody sees a lion come around the corner. <laughs> the wrangler did come around and go, that's the dumbest <laughs> thing I've ever seen. Yeah. And now that I know lions very, very well, probably better than most, uh, it is the dumbest thing, and it shouldn't have happened, but clearly the lion liked me, I liked the lion, so after that, I started coming to work every day early, and I would take him for a walk every day, well, with its wrangler, I was the backup guy, and I would have mm-hmm. treats for him, and I would, so then going to work every day, then I started cleaning up after him, and that's when sort of the hard work came into being a big animal trainer. Fast forward a couple years of that, uh, I got the opportunity to do a conservation project where I then got to use the science part of my background and the thinking part of my background with my animal training. I was a big cat expert at that point. I was a, you know, I was a trainer at that point, doing things that other people couldn't do with big cats. Mm-hmm. And I was asked if I could be the first person in the world to ever train captive red tigers on how to hunt and fend for themselves in the wild. And the which guy, is incredible. Which is awesome. It's and amazing. So who says no to that? Yeah. You know, and the best part was someone obviously knew me very well. I was like, the world says you can't do it. All the scientists have tried it and they can't do it. I'm like, don't tell me I can't do something. <laughs> so, you know, atypically, I, I quit my job. Moved, I was given, I remember it was maybe three in the afternoon. I was like, he, goes, he says, well, I'm going to go and build this sanctuary in Africa and teach the Asian governments how Africans how, are partnering with local people to conserve their big cats so that we can help conserve tigers. And I don't want to catch a wild tiger and put them in my sanctuary, so I'm going to take a couple captive ones and teach them how to be wild in my sanctuary that I build. And I thought ethically and morally that made sense to me. The structure of selling a, an ecological model that would then help save a species was 100% what I thought I should yeah. be doing. So 3 o'clock in the afternoon, filled up the zoo truck with all of my things, drove my parents and said, I'm going to Africa. And I just said, I don't know anything. I'm just having a return. How old are you at this time? 21 or 22. Okay, all right, and so yeah, young. Yeah, right? young, yeah. and you know, I, I, they're like, oh, what do you mean? You don't know this guy? You don't know anything about any of this? What? I said, well, that's a return ticket. You know, whatever. Yeah. You know, worth yeah. So TV found me doing that project. As we started to have success, TV found me, and that's sort of where the marriage of conservation, love of wildlife, and TV mixed into what is now a 
almost 20 year career. It'll be 20 years at the end of this year. Yeah, un unbelievable, unbelievable. Long story, guys. I hope you still. No, I mean it's, it's, it's unbelievable. <laughs> so let me, I, you know, question. So for like, if you were giving advice to a younger, you know, person out there who's like, I want to do what Dave Simone does, or I just want to play with animals. Yeah. Like, what's your advice? Obviously, the your passion, your work, everything kind of aligned, the stars align to have right. a, a very story career. What would you say to that? Yeah, I think that, it, that once again, you have to understand it's passion because it is a terrible job. Like it is mostly picking up shit, you know, you know, it is, I, I, <laughs> it's, I, I, right. it's, okay. it's mostly dealing with the dirt. It is, yeah. it is, it is emptying dishes. It's feeling water. Uh, you are basically a farmer for exotic animals uh -huh. and it's, so it's 90% a really bad job and 10% so amazing that you can't. So you have to know that you're passionate. You don't want to start down that path without knowing for sure that's what you want to do, yeah. or at least you want to do a couple internships, go to a couple places where you can test that theory out. Is, you know, it, is it is it for like how often are there internships? Yeah, I think it, it, it's 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 locally related. So wherever you live, if you live in areas where these people exist, they are very used to people knocking the door saying, "I love animals. I would really like to come and work there." And okay. and they will take every and any <laughs> intern because they're cheap. Yeah. Uh, but that's also where you get your. They're not stealing from you because you really do get a sense for does it does that ten percent of awesome way way enough. To fight the ninety percent of not so awesome, you got to remember mm -hmm. during the worst snowstorms, the worst rainstorms, the worst worst of everything, you're the caregiver of those animals, and you will suffer to make sure that your though your animals are, are cared for. But much like if they were your children, you wouldn't mind. You don't think of how much how much sleep you've lost or how much suffering you're doing because you love it and you love them. So that's the start. The process, I think, is everywhere and anywhere you need to get experience with animals. So if you uh, go to a horse enclosure. You maybe want to work with lions, but you go, but you can't. You don't have a lion guy anywhere near you, so yeah. you live at home. If there's a horse guy, go there. If there is a vet clinic, you can go there. If you, because really, all of the employer wants to know is, are you willing to do all that dirty, gross, awful work that isn't thankful in any way, where you're not petting the animal, you're cleaning kennels, or you're sweeping out horse stalls? Because once you have that credibility then there's no risk in training you. I'll take you in because I know after two weeks, you're gonna be like, this is too hard for me. I've got yeah. calluses on my hands now, my back is very sore. Yeah. And that happens to a lot of people and you can't feel bad if that happens to you, but certainly any level of experience that is, I will muck in there and do the dirty work yeah. because I really love animals, um, will really help a resume getting you to that point. Uh, the next thing is a matter of, you have to be, have an ability to assess your skills. If you want to be, like, there are lots and lots of people out there that I know that want to be big cat people. And all the big cat people say, you're not the right person. You don't have the right personality. Like in my case, if I want to train a horse, a horse trainer can train a horse and to do something in two days, it might take me two weeks. My personality, my movements, I love it. I love them, but I'm just not good at it. It's not my, it's not my skill. Much like that for Little Lions. Some people aren't big cat people or elephant people or bear people or so yeah. you have to know if people are giving you advice that have, are 20 years in it you got to take it because this yeah. is this is a business where you get hurt right it, you know the other part of that and, and the bad part of that is if your passion is something that is dangerous your passion could kill you you, you know i think a lot of people know about the timothy treadwell grizzly man type story mm -hmm. and regardless of what people think of his personalities he had a passion for bears so he goes. He went and lived with bears, and he tried to promote bear conservation. Mm -hmm. uh, and that passion eventually got him killed. And that's a reality. I ha I was attacked by a male lion, nearly ripped my throat out, um, and that was within the first year of me working. Um, so you really do have to understand that advice is really important. <laughs> yeah, advice, advice is really important. And there's some challenges on the job. No yeah, about it. absolutely. <laughs> so my point is, get some experience. Any experience is great experience. Understand that advice is awesome. Uh, try to take baby steps. No one's gonna give you that awesome animal you want to mm -hmm. play with right away. Maybe you're training a mouse at first, then you're training a kitten at first, and then you're, you know, you really, it's a progression, yeah. it's it's a work, and you'll get there. Yeah, man, it, you know what it is, it's like, the excitement I see of you talking about, it's yeah, just, it's, it's, fun. it's palpable. It's super fun, it's, it's so amazing. Awesome. Yeah. All right, so fifth and final question, this comes from one of our students, yep. Isabel, she's 16 years old, and she's like, What's your favorite animal to work with and why? That's a very difficult <laughs> question. Isabel, it's a great question. It's a very difficult question. Um, the last animal you work with is always the one you love the most, I think. <laughs> like, so in my case, someone's like, hey, I've got this idea of like hanging out with whales. Like, whales are 
awesome. <laughs> you know, you're, you're almost like, what is that? Um, oh, I won't even remember the reference of the film, but it's like, whatever draws your attention. Um, remember that, that dog on Up? And he goes, squirrel, squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> Animals are like that. So like, if you're working with lions, like lions are so amazing. So in my case, if I'm feeling uh, sentimental at all, big cats come to mind. It might be a big lion, it might be a big tiger, so then it'll be, oh, they're my favorite. And then the next day, I'll see an elephant. I'm like, oh my God, I love elephants. <laughs> you know, the next day you've had too much of this ground-based stuff and you want to get underwater and it, great white sharks are just so cool. <laughs> uh, I'm very lucky because I have a job with all kinds of different yeah. animals. So having one is impossible. Um, last night I handled a Tamandua, Taramandua, I should know how to pronounce it, but go online, you'll see. Taramandua are very cute. And so right now I'd say that guy's Taramandua. my favorite today, uh, <laughs> but it could change tomorrow. Who knows? Yeah, and that's the awesome part about what you get to do. You totally. can change it up. Totally right. And uh, you know, the TV side of this, um, you have to realize, is the facilitation for the passion. You know, you certainly shouldn't go into wildlife particularly and think that I want a job in TV wildlife. Right. That is a, such a specific yeah. thing to do. It can be a goal for hopefully maybe one day that'll happen for me, yeah. but certainly uh, those are too difficult. Well, you know, yeah. TV is difficult in its sense. Yeah. Animals are different in their own. Having the, in my case, it happened by happenstance. It wasn't something I sought after. Yeah. So you have to realize that, uh, take, it, take it step by step and, yeah. and, and, and find- and, Be there and, for the right reasons. Exactly right, yeah. 100%. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, Dave, thank you for doing thank five you for questions. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. You got to check him out in a, in a couple of places. He has a show on Facebook, Animal Bites. Animal Bites, yep, um, with Dave Salmoni. Yep, Facebook, check that out. Check out his Instagram. You want to watch all his stuff around the world. It's pretty awesome. Real Dave Salmoni. Um, this is awesome, man. Thanks for having Thanks me. Thanks for stopping Thanks on Thanks for by. watching, guys. Yeah. Dave Salmoni, five questions with. I appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, cheers. All right, bye, guys. Dude, that was awesome.